Okay, I think we can start now. Welcome to this session. My name is Morteza Miglari Apari, and in this presentation, I give a quick overview of our computer system engineering program, and also briefly talk about some employment opportunities. First, we're looking at why we need computer engineers and how we are going to train computer system, new computer system engineer, uh, computer system engineer. For this purpose, we are looking at the challenges that computer engineers will face in 2020s and beyond by looking at some of the most important target application. One of the most important one is related to artificial intelligence and machine learning, as you might have heard about that. Big companies, many big companies like Google, Facebook, Nvidia, Intel, they invested a lot of money in this area, developed lots of hardware and software for different types of applications. The other important application for 2020s would be related to autonomous vehicle, and here is, is again the place that computer engineer can make contribution by designing hardware, software, component of the system as well as the required algorithms. Another important application is related to intelligent medical devices. We also have robotics, which are used for industrial automation as well as healthcare system. We have colleagues in our department who are working to develop robotics application for elderly, to improve elderly healthcare. And there are other type of application which are used for entertainment, for example, augmented virtual reality used for movies or video computer games. And all of these will be connected together through the so-called Internet of Things. So before we go further, we look at, anyway, in this case, some of uh, examples and some videos about these applications to get more information. Looking at medical devices, they can be used as wireless implantable devices, which will be placed inside different parts of human bodies, or can be developed as a sophisticated equipment to be used by medical doctors and nurses for accurate, the most accurate, the more accurate and fast uh, diagnosis. So here again, the computer engineer not only should be involved to design the hardware and software component of this implantable devices, they also need to consider the issues related to reliability, safety, as well as security. So there are many factors that should be considered by computer engineer in addition to the hardware and software design of the system. We talked about artificial intelligence and its importance. This short video gives you some general idea. The artificial intelligence is really techniques that help machines and computers mimic human behavior. It's like a Russian nesting doll. Artificial intelligence at the highest level is the device being smart. How it becomes smart under the hood then is the next layer of machine learning, which are the general techniques or a variety of techniques that are used to make that device smart. And then there's a further subset of algorithms or techniques called deep learning. Artificial intelligence is gonna be used in everything. So I'll give you two examples. If a car has a intelligence built in, if it can see the world, so looking at what's on the road, looking at you as the driver, and being able to anticipate and course correct when something goes wrong, something jumps into the road. Autonomous vehicles of any kind are not going to be autonomous without artificial intelligence. Uh, in the medical field, new treatments that'll come from the analysis of reams of data to detect cancers and diseases. Today, machines are smart, and they're smart because of AI. But AI still has a dependency on us, people. We are making it possible. The next phase is when artificial intelligence is able to walk on its own. Companies like Qualcomm, if we do our jobs right, and if artificial intelligence is done right, the actual implementation is totally transparent to a consumer. But what they end up with is devices in their world that are more than utilities. They're actually experiential. And they will make your life easier. Okay, as you see, there are lots of applications related to artificial intelligence and machine learning. And again, it's, job, it's the job of computer engineer to develop the related software and hardware for that. In this video, it also mentioned about autonomous vehicles. So in the next video, we see a quick overview. You've probably of read something about autonomous vehicles in the news, but what are they and how do they work? 
Well, they use sensors, lasers, and cameras to navigate the roads. And there are actually five different levels of automation. Today, your car is at level one with features like cruise control and parking sensors. But by level five, the car can drive itself completely. All you do is tell it where to go. But what does that actually mean? Well, with computers at the wheel, you'll get from A to B faster with less congestion and less pollution. Once you arrive, your car will even park itself. But their biggest benefit is safety. Every year, more than a million people are killed in car accidents worldwide, and 90% of them are caused by human error. Sometimes we get tired, we lose concentration, and every now and then just get it wrong. Could driverless cars be safer? We'll have to be able to make quick decisions in all kinds of situations and share the roads with conventional vehicles, pedestrians and cyclists. There's still a lot of work to be done, but driverless cars could dramatically cut the number of accidents on the roads and save millions of lives. That doesn't make letting go of the wheel any easier though. There are still lots of unanswered questions. Who's to blame if there's an accident? Can autonomous vehicles be hacked? And what if you're someone who just likes driving? To find out more about what an autonomous future might mean for you, visit FIA.com. You've probably read... Okay, so if you look at what is the current state of the art related to advanced driver assistance system, we see that the current modern car, they have more than 100 intelligent computing devices inside them. They are used for different purposes, for example, for engine control, power steering, or the safety issues, like airbag controlling, or parking sensor detection, blind spot detection, and so on. Or even for entertainment purposes, we have the TV modules, we have lots of other facilities to make it easier for the driver to use the car in more convenient. So this is just the current level where we still have some time to go or some ways to go to reach to the autonomous car, which is the target of this type of application. But even at this stage, there are a lot of, as I said, more than 100 computing devices are in today's modern car. And that made the importance of the contributions made by computer engineer even more than the mechanical engineer, which used to be dominant in the two, one decade or two decades ago. The other issue that should be considered for the autonomous car when they are connected together is the security. So security here just gives some general overview of some places that computer engineer can contribute to improve the security of the system. It could be related to cover or to provide solution or reduce the impact of vulnerabilities related to different sensors, GPS, for example, camera, etc. Or it could be related to its different type of hardware used in the system or different parts of software used in the system. So this indicates another area that computer engineers should make contribution in the next decades. The other application, important application, is related to robotics. Robotics are used in industrial automation to reduce the cost, improve the productivity, and increase the quality. Some people may think that this would will uh, result in job loss for people, which is actually won't be the case because there would be new jobs created. But what is important to notice that these new jobs need skilled people to, anyway, to do what are the requirements of those jobs. It's also, robotics can be used for some other application like space, for example. In this case, there would be dynamically reconfigurable hardwares which are used for this a critical application. In this case, not only the engineer should consider the security safety, they should also consider the reliability, which will happen due to cosmic rays present in a state. Now, because of transistor sizes becoming significantly small, we may also have those problems even on Earth for our ordinary application. So these are also the other issues that should be tackled by a computer engineer. We talked that all of these should be connected to the internet to make the so-called internet of things. So in this video, we see a little more details about that. It's a world that's constantly changing all around us due to these sensors and the internet, and we call it the internet of things. Let's stroll into the living room of the future. Now, immediately, this room 
identifies you and taps into a cloud-based profile of preferences like climate control, music, lighting, and decor. Had a long day at work? The room knows based on the calendar app on your phone and biosensors that detect the stress via blood pressure and heart rate. So it turns off the rockabilly surf guitar you usually listen to and switches to a more soothing classical music from environmental sensors outside, and maybe even worn within your clothing itself, it knows it was snowing earlier. So the climate control begins to crank up the heat in anticipation as you walk through the door. Now, on the software side, we're talking about algorithms that are so sophisticated, they may be able to predict what you want before you know you even wanted it. So when you walk to the refrigerator, it tells you not only what's in there, it tells you what you can make with the stuff you already have and it's already telling you what's inside and what's the perfect meal based upon your mood, your activity level, and maybe even, well, your weight loss plan for some of us. So we're gonna live in a world completely filled with sensors, with data, reacting to us, changing every moment dependent upon our needs. I'm no longer going to be asking you, hey, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite music? I'm going to ask you, what's your reality like? Okay, so these are indicating the different application, and here are again the areas or application areas which can benefit from Internet of Things inside a smart city, having intelligent sensor for different type of applications, or a smart hospital using intel connected intelligent devices, or intelligent transportation system through a smart, having a smart highway, or even a smart factory where we have internet of industrial uh, components or industrial internet of things which are using a smart factory. Now we are going to see how the Faculty of Engineering and our department provides a plan to train engineers to cope with these challenges. Faculty of Engineers follows some specific themes. So these are highlighted in red here. Those are directly addressed in the curriculum development and the courses, compulsory courses or elective courses for computer system engineer. And you see that covers different ranges of application needed for today's uh, modern uh, communities. Then we look at that, how we plan the curriculum for our computer system engineering. We develop a new curriculum which will be started from next year when we move to the new building. So the new engineers will go through this new curriculum. The main important difference considering computer engineers with software engineer or computer scientists is that computer engineer, they will learn to do hardware and software co-design. So that means in practice, you may have 100% hardware at one extreme or 100% software in another extreme. But in practice, there is combination of hardware and software because there need to be some flexibility to be optimized, cost optimization, performance and reliability optimization, and energy optimization, especially for portable devices, as well as security and reliability. So that means computer engineers need to develop skills on both software design and hardware design. In our software design, we have the courses that the students learn how to design algorithm and use the programming language. This is the list of some of the language that will, the student will learn in our curriculum. For the hardware part, they will learn the basics of electronic and circuit design, as well as they learn hardware description language, which assists engineers to design hardware and use the electronic design automation tool to do rapid development and increase the reliability of the hardware design and reduce the cost. This, anyway, foundation will lead to different type of application which are provided in some of our elective or compulsory courses that will cover robotic system design using project-based courses. We also have distributed embedded system design, considering safety critical application, secure system. They will learn about artificial intelligence and machine learning, as well as computer network and industrial automation. The other important point is that this, the, this program, Computer System Engineering, has some overlap with the two other programs, Electrical and Electronic Engineering and Software Engineering, which is offered by our department. 
So there are pathways for students to participate or take courses from the other specialization. Especially this can be done through the final year research project where we have we can have a student from different specialization to work as a team member to do some specific research project. We have some special purpose labs which are dedicated to computer system engineering program in addition to other labs which is common and shared by all other degrees. So here are some, some of them, industrial automation lab, embedded system lab, and robotics lab. They are currently located in new market, but from next year when we move to the new building, they will be located in the city campus. Looking at employment opportunities, our graduates, computer system engineers, have been employed by many companies. So these are some of the big names which employed our students locally and international level, IBM, for example, Microsoft, etc. And there are some other local companies which employ our students. What is important to note that there is a lot of demand in computer engineer. And as you notice from my previous slides, we have lots of new tar target applications. So definitely the importance and the need for computer engineers who have the skills both for hardware design and software design will be increased. So the new generation, they have lots of interesting applications to look at that, and there would be more opportunity for um, uh, more progress. Okay, if you want to summarize what computer system engineer can do, our graduates will learn will uh, apply what they learn about hardware and software design or, or hardware and software co-design to design intelligent computing devices, which can be used for different type of application as listed here. So if you want to get more information, especially to look at some of the project which has been done by our final year student, I invite you to attend our exhibition day, which is 11th of October. That is in our new market campus. So that's the address and information is also available in the brochure you can get from my colleague outside. And the other information, you can check our engineering website or contact me if you have more information. And also I would like to acknowledge my colleagues who are involved and make contribution in our computer system engineering program. Before I conclude this presentation, we have a short video, it's about one minute and 30 seconds. That indicates that a robot, which is called Baxter, plays chess. And this was programmed by one of our computer system engineering students a few years ago. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? <laughs>